All right, what's going on? We got a super special technical video today. Today we're doing some high rise pumping up to level 37 of a downtown Vancouver high rise here. What's technical and special about the video? Ian, what's special about today's video? Besides you, hey, look at this. But yes, you too, yes, you too. So what we have here is an inline pressure gauge. How it works, it's got a grease nipple on the back. You pump it full of grease. That column stays full of grease. And the line is pressurized, it pushes on the grease. It gives a rating in good old fashioned PSI as to what the, the true line pressure is. So what's gonna be fun about this, fun and scientific is, we have one down here right off the back of the pump, and we have one up at level 30 spliced in line with the pipeline. We're gonna compare while we're pumping what the pressure is down here at the back of the pump versus the pressure at level 30, and it's gonna tell us what the loss is for the system. Now we know that for every, every 10 feet of vertical rise, 1.1 PSI of pressure loss attributed just to the vertical rise. That doesn't factor in friction within the pipe. So we're gonna total all that up and we'll see what we come up with. Um, there's things like, uh, they call it a nomograph and you can calculate you can calculate the actual pressure required to pump to a certain height. A lot of variables involved in terms of uh, mix design, slump, and whatnot. Um, but we're gonna be able to show what the actual pressure is. So we've got clamps down below that are rated for 300 bar of pressure. The pump here, this swing pump, maxes out at 170 bar pressure. 300 bar clamp, 170 bar pump. So we've got uh, we got lots of room to play there. We're uh, we're uh, we're well covered that way in terms of uh, the the safety factor. Um, but we're going to see. I'm going to say we're probably going to have about 1,000 to 1,100 psi of line pressure at the back of the pump here. And I'm going to say that up top. Well, I'm not going to say. Let's let's see what the drop is from here down to there. So the pressure does not because it's not hydraulic, it's not like we're pumping water or hydraulic oil. The pressure back here is not gonna be the same as it is up top near the discharge end, and we are gonna prove that with these fancy dancy pressure gauges. So yeah, we just wait for concrete to show up here, and we'll, uh, we'll get some data. I'm gonna have this GoPro that I'm holding up top. I'm gonna give Ian this GoPro, and we're gonna get simultaneous footage down here and the gauge up top, and we'll do a split screen, and we'll see what the uh, what the difference is. Anyhow, I'm gonna climb up top and then I'll come down to level 30 and, uh, and we'll get some, uh, some pressure readings here. And Ian and I will get some uh, conclusive evidence how much pressure loss is there from the back of the pump. 30 floors up the high rise. Let's see what we got. Also a fun little tidbit here. On my morning job, I stepped in a sinkhole. So I'm not wearing a sock. Hey. Do me a favor. I stepped in a mud hole. Can you put my sock on the manifold to dry it? <laughs> Thanks. No, I mean that. That's honestly mine. He thought I was joking. No, I stepped in a, uh, a sinkhole on the last job. Decided to rinse my sock off, but it's still wet. Oh, you're keeping it. Yeah, I, I just need to dry it off, man. sock out it's still soaking wet so we're using the uh, Schwing SP4800 sock dryer to rectify that situation perfect you thought I was joking that actually worked pretty well all right so that's our system going up I don't know but 75, 80 feet of system, and then we go whoosh, go vertical all the way up to level 37. And as we all know, I refuse to take the elevator. Well, let's walk. We'll check in every 10 floors. Here we go.
level 10. Legs are burning a little bit, breathing a little bit heavy. No big one. All right, level 20. It's always about 20. You catch that second wind. You feel like you can go another 50. We're doing good, doing good. All right, here we go. Level 30. That is where our second uh, pressure gauge is at. So we'll take our readings from here on level 30 and Ian will be down at the back of the pump. We'll do a split screen and compare the two. So yeah, the guy's just gonna fill these columns. It's only two loads of concrete. Probably wondering why they don't do this with the crane. Well, because the crane is very busy getting the core ready for tomorrow. So as long as the crane can keep busy, place to move makes sense. All right, here we go. What's the most pressure we've seen so far? Oh, wow. 800. 800. I reset it before we started too. Should we reset it? Maybe, I think the grout might spike it because it's so... During the pour, on the slab pour, the highest we saw was 250. Um, can you ask Ian to reset his down below too? Ian, you got a copy? Alright. You want to reset that red tab on your presser right now? I will get spiked up that thousand. Uh, no, reset it down to zero right now and we'll see what it goes to when we start pumping. So yeah, I suspect the grow being so fluid spiked the pressure higher than we're actually going to see up here. You know, tell Ian as soon as he starts pumping again, hit record on the GoPro right away. He said as soon as you start pumping, hit record on the GoPro right away. Okay, so we've got what looks like about 250 PSI pressure in the system here, and we'll compare that to what Ian's seeing down below at the pump. So that was one of the most interesting things we saw here is that uh, when we were pushing the grout through, we had 800 PSI up top here, and Ian also had 800 PSI down below. So because the grout is so fluid, there's very little loss from point A to point B. Whereas when we got into the actual concrete where there's more frictional loss, we were at 250-ish up top here, and Ian down below was sitting at, a, at about 800. So interesting data indeed. As, as per conform, it's 1.1 foot, or what, sorry, 1.1 PSI per every vertical foot of rise, but that doesn't include the friction of the concrete inside the pipeline. Depending on what you're pumping. Yeah, depending on, on the slump, um, any chemicals that are added to it, aggregate size, there's a whole bunch of variables that way too. But the actual vertical rise portion is a standard rule, 1.1 PSI for the vertical rise. So we lost, we got 800 down below, we got 250 here. So it took uh, 550, 550 PSI of loss from the pump to here. So we'll do a little demo here. Grab our grease gun.
column fills with grease, concrete pushes on grease, grease activates pressure gauge. Easy. Okay, we got a little bit wetter mud in here now. A little bit wetter mud in the system now. We're way down up here. You hear that? The bike? It's like a change in slump, right? It's actually pretty cool that we can hear it. Oh wow. Hope that doesn't segregate. Oh boy. Wow. We got it spiking now. I won't segregate. Spike. What's that slump about now? Spike back up to 250. I would say like over 200. So anybody curious about the decal here, the decal about the restraining device, um, that would be applicable in an application as if you were hanging this from a boom. You'd use a safety sling like you would with any uh, reducer, tip pose, any of that kind of stuff. Um, and this application here where we're locked between two clamps, uh, that is not what this decal pertains to. So just to clarify, Okay, so we've slumped the concrete up down below. It's a lot wetter now. And let's see if our theory here holds true that the wetter the concrete is, the more equalizer, um, uh, less less drastic of a loss there is between the pressure gauge at the street and the pressure gauge up top here. So let's see what we get. Oh, that's spiked up. Wow. I think it's, it's fighting that wet stuff through. Whoa, hold up. He, he plugged it, he plugged it. Did you plug it? Yeah. Yeah, he plugged it, the reducer. Come on, baby. Come on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can you plug again? Oh, Tell him to get a little bit more. Okay, give me another couple strokes. Okay, okay, fuck off. <laughs> yeah, freaking liquid. Yeah, that was, man. yeah, that's not good. We heard it. We heard the wet stuff come through and snag up at the uh, at the clamps. And I was worried about when it got into the the boom, what it might do. All right, so we stumbled upon some. Uh, some very critical data actually. Um, when we had that plug there, when we had the plug, we saw a maximum of just less than 800 PSI at the gauge on level 30 here. So when we go down, we'll check with Ian and see what, uh, we'll check with Ian down below and see what he'd seen. Oh, here he's calling me right now. Hey, question for you. When we had the plug, what did you see on your pressure gauge down there? Wait, what's the red needle at? Okay, so your red needle down there hit a thousand. Okay, didn't go higher than a thousand. Okay, so up here we saw, uh, up here we saw just shy of 800, right, right around 800. Okay, okay, good, good data, good data. That's all I wanted to know. All right, well, I'd say we got some pretty conclusive data. Um, we got a plug, which sucked, but it was actually some important data for what we we're trying to see here today. 
Like I said, we hit right around 800, 800 PSI on the gauge up here. And down at pump level, we're right around 1,000, I believe a little over 1,000, um, which proves the, the theory that for every, every one foot of vertical rise in the pipeline, there's 1.1 PSI of pressure loss, right? We're up at this level here, we're up 300 feet. So theoretically, there would be a 330 PSI loss of pressure to push that concrete vertical. Um, that being said, there's all kinds of variables in terms of slump, mixed design. Uh, there's a lot of different things. So it is just kind of a, a, rough, uh, a rough guideline that we saw there. Um, during regular pumping, what we were seeing down below is, uh, is about 800 and on the gauge here, turn the telltale down, we were seeing around 250. So, but when you get, when we caught the plug there, the, uh, the pressure equalized um, just because the concrete had nowhere to go. So, yeah, what we also found is the wetter the concrete, the closer the pressure is up here to what it is down at street level. Uh, with grout, it was almost equal. Uh, important to note that grout is also lighter than concrete. It's a lighter material, so there's not as much pressure required to, to push it vertically. Uh, but yeah, really, really interesting little devices these are um, that tell, uh, that tell uh, paint a pretty good picture, tell a pretty good story about everything that's going on with the pipe. For high rise guys, uh, these are very, uh, very handy tools to have. I'd, I'd highly recommend. So like I said, catch the full video on the YouTube channel of the uh, previous slab pour from start to finish. And uh, yeah, that'll be it for today. One of these, one of those, keep on pumping and uh, catch you guys on the next one. Oh yeah, also can't forget, uh, the official Canadian Concrete Pumper merch store is up and running. Uh, hats, t-shirts, hoodies, long sleeves, all kinds of good stuff on there. Uh, so appreciate everybody who supported the channel. If you uh, wanna grab some Canadian Concrete Pumper branded, uh, finally, 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 three years in the making, finally there's a place to do so. I'll put a link up here or there or there, or probably at the end of the video too. So anyhow, catch you on the next one.